I don't know if this happens to you or not, but I seem to end up with a bunch of faulty power banks. What I've discovered is, it's not usually the battery that fails, but the electronics inside of this and the circuit boards. So instead of just throwing these away, I've decided to pull the batteries out and actually make my own power bank. And here it is. So I've added a couple of modifications to it and hopefully some improvements. First of all, we've got a, a voltage display which tells me what percentage the battery is charged up to. And this one's charged up to 100% because I've just charged it. But also, I've included a voltage regulator. So now I can power all my circuit programs and projects that I do by this little power bank, which is pretty cool, I reckon. So this builds all about how I manage to turn one of these faulty power banks into something useful. Let's get building. So here's the plan. I've got this charging module. It's quite cool. It's got a, a display on the front there. Tells you what percentage the battery's been charged up to. A couple of outlets just there. An inlet just there for uh, charging the battery. I've also got a voltage regulator here. I'm going to add that as well. The little LED voltage meter display. And I can use the battery to power up any of my circuit projects. A couple of banana plugs as well. So parts wise there's not much into it. But I don't think I'm going to need much more. screws there so we'll unscrew those hopefully that will uh, allow me to pull out the insides Some lights flashing. Whoa! Is this actually working now? Did I get this to work? I think there might be a loose wire or a connection somewhere. That kind of seemed to work then. So these have been welded on place, in place, but I'm going to just cut them there and there and we can add some solder to it and go from there. Okay, so I've cut away this module see the two tabs are written positive and negative and you can see because I'm a dick I touched them both together and I've kind of mounted this little tab there it's no big deal I'm gonna put some solder on both that that tells me this thing is fully charged and it was the module that failed so let's add some solder to each of those connect up this new one We'll see what we'll see. It's not sticking exceedingly well, but whatever. So here's the big test. Let's see what happens if I push this button. Supposed to be I push this button and see how many volts are in the battery, but you can see that nothing's coming up. Womp womp. So let's check for the multimeter and just see if there's any power in this thing. 4.17, so it's fully charged in the battery. I'm gonna plug this into a USB. Sometimes they just need resetting, so I'll plug into a USB now and give that a shot. So that actually seemed to do the trick. It, sometimes it just needs a, a reboot. If I hold this, we get a reading of 91 volts. So yeah, really it was just this electronic this circuit board which was faulty in some way. But my new one seems to work.
slightly change the design. As you do. I'm going to have something more like this. Makes it more compact. And I've left myself a little bit of room for the plugs. But yeah, we'll have it coming out the side there. <clears throat> All right, so what I've got here is just a little device to help me square up everything. And what I'm going to do is use capillary action to drive the super glue between that crack there. So now I have my two signs. We can glue those together and make our base. Not base, we make our case, not base. So while we wait for this to dry, I thought I'd show you what I'm going to use for the base. I've got this lovely three inch red acrylic, which my son decided to carve his name in with an engraver that I recently got. Whatever, that can just be on the bottom. So we'll sand this flat, and then we'll have a red one on top, uh, on the bottom, and then a white one on top. So there's the base. It's a little bit too big, but uh, that's fine, because I'm gonna be sanding, sanding all these sides and edges. So I really want it a little bit too big. So I'm going to have white at the bottom. Let's have a look. Yeah, that's cool. It's cool. It's going to look good. I might even round off the edges a little bit. We'll see how we go with that. You know what's funny? I was supposed to glue the white on the bottom. I was going to use the red for the top. Oh, well, white for the top now. I'm going to add just a touch of glue to each of these, just to the sides, and glue this on lightly, very lightly, so I can sand it, uh, and get it flush with the sides of the wood. And then I have to work out the cutouts. Okay, I didn't bother showing you how I cut the hole, but I just use a Dremel. And I'm not going to show you how I messed up that one, because you don't need to know that. So yeah, we've got it in, it's very tight fit, it's flush, which is kind of cool. So next I've got to do a little cutout in the front there, so I've measured that up. So here's where we're at. I've added most of the components now, actually I've added all the components. Yeah, I got ahead of myself and I didn't feel much of that, but it's pretty boring just watching me drill and cut holes out. While well, we're looking inside, all the wiring's done. I've added the voltage regulator here. I had to glue it in just there, um, just because I couldn't fit a nut on there. It's not, the, not ideal because you shouldn't really add glue to switches or pots because there's a good chance of the glue seeping in, but seems to be turning okay that's the switch to turn on and off the uh, voltage regulator so not much wiring you can see there's a little switch just here i've added a couple of wires and pulled that switch out to the top so i'll show you what how it all works so let's uh see how this works so if we push this button we'll get the voltage meter or reader and sitting at 84 percent Again, that will turn off. Now we've got the voltage regulator and the voltage on the regulator is there. Turn it up, down. You can see because I had to put this upside down, 
the uh, control is a bit weird so it's when I turn it to the right it goes down when I turn it to the left it goes up but, eh. but that works fine it goes right down to 2.8 volts it's even lower but it doesn't read anymore up to 32 so plenty of voltage for my projects um, banana plugs are there so I'll be able to um, connect a couple of mail like this one here into there and I can plug that into my projects yeah so I'm pretty happy with it next thing to do is just to glue this lid down I'm not gonna add a lot of glue just enough to hold it in case I ever have to get inside because I can't really drill holes and screw it there's just not enough wood here done. Let's test it out, make sure everything works okay, better. It's charging, it's already at 100%, so perfect. That's great, and then this one would be 2 amp, and this one's 1 amp here, so, and then you've got your, obviously, your charging inlet. Let's try out the banana plugs. So you can see now that I'm powering my breadboard and this circuit up through my uh, power bank via the voltage regulator. It's doing 8.8 .8 volts at the moment. This is just a little circuit I built recently, um, LED matrix. Um, it's an LED oscillator actually with the mic as well, so you can put it through to um, circuits to, to mics. Pretty cool, hey? Alright, so thanks for checking this out and happy building. <laughs>